He is the giver of life. Without God, this life that we are living, we will not have it. Somebody put your hands together again for Jesus. I love to celebrate Jesus because what you cannot do with your strength, Jesus will give you the grace to do it. What you cannot process with your mind, he will breathe his spirit upon you and he will give you understanding to be able to do it. What you are afraid of, Jesus is able to give you the spirit of love, power, and sound mind. What you cannot do, he makes his grace sufficient for you. So you are able to overcome. You are able to conquer. You are able to destroy the works of the enemy. Jesus is Lord. Somebody begin to pray. This is the beginning of the month. The first service of the month. The beginning of November. Let me give you a secret. Go ahead and begin to use words. Oh, to shape up your future. To shape your November. What is it that you want God to do for you in the month of November? What are your expectations? You don't come before the Lord without expectations. If I ask you to go to the White House right now and the president told you to come, you will go with expectations. You will go with gladness in your heart. You will go with joy. You will go with hope knowing that once you sit next to the president, your life will change. Even if the president don't give you nothing, just because you have a picture and you have a relationship with him, people will begin to relate to you. People will begin to bless you. People will begin to give you contract. We call it the power of connections. But you and I, this morning, we are connected to the most powerful man, to the most powerful God. We are connected to a living God. Whatever you desire in the month of November, I come in the name of the Lord. The Bible say blessed is he who come in the name of the Lord this morning I don't come in my own name I don't come in my own strength I don't come in my own power I come by the spirit of the living God and I ask you to begin to pray whatever you want to see in the month of November if it is healing deliverance restoration if it is miracles signs and wonders believe God for everything the Bible say he is able to do able 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 yes, he is not trying yes, but he is able hey. he is not deciding he is able he is Ooh. not figuring it out he is able he is not testing it out he is able he is able he has the capacity to bring to pass that thing that you are imagining in your heart he has the capacity to bring a blessing upon your life he has the capacity to make you a miracle a capacity to get you financial breakthrough, a capacity to bring you to an expected end. His grace will find sufficiency in your life. It will find expression in your life. You will become a product of grace. A product of grace. Grace will find you in this month of November. And everything that is lacking in your life, you will receive it. Everything. Everything. Oh, I have tasted and have seen the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. If it wasn't so, I won't tell you. Jesus said, I go to my father and I prepare a place for you. Yes, there are many mansions. If it wasn't so, I will not tell you. If I didn't know God heals, I won't tell you he do. If I didn't know God delivers, I won't tell you he does. If I didn't know God can make a way, where it look as if, where it seem, where there seem to be no way, I will not tell you so. If I didn't tell you that, yes, God can empower you to defeat your Goliath, to defeat your enemies, then I will not tell you so. Paul said, we preach, we testify of what we have seen and heard, what we have experienced. I am not talking to you about an abstract God, a God in a distant land, a God who lives in you, begin to pray right now. Don't allow the enemy to make you quieter. I know what I prayed for in the month of November. God gave all of it to me. All of it to me. All that you need.
need to do is to open up your mouth uh, and begin to speak to God. Uh, the Bible says, uh, this is our confidence. Uh, oh, my confidence is not in my degrees. Uh, my confidence is not in my certificate. Uh, my confidence is not in my mind. Uh, but this is my confidence uh, that when I pray, uh, the will of God, uh, he hears me. And if he hears me, he will answer. I need somebody in the house who believes uh, that God is an answering God. God. He is a prayer answering God to begin to pray. He is here in this place. He is a God who answered by fire. Oh, Mama Taliba Hotala Brescavilla. He answered by fire. He answered by fire. He answered by fire. Yeah. What is it that has been hindering you? What is the promotion that you are looking for? What is the financial breakthrough? Are you looking for job? Opening doors. He said, Behold, I put the key of David in your hands. Who am I speaking to? Who wants to receive the key of David? Who wants to receive, receive the key of David? This key, let me tell you about what this key is about. This key of David, he said, If you open any door, it will remain open open. Uh, doors will not close in your face. Uh, financial doors uh, it will not close in your face. Uh, doors of marriage uh, will not close in your face. Uh, doors of healing uh, will not close in your face. Uh, nobody can shut the door in your face. Uh, and he said, uh, whatever door you lock, it will remain locked. Uh, we lock the doors uh, to demonic forces. Uh, we lock the doors uh, to poverty. We lock the doors uh, to financial crisis. Uh, we lock the doors to sickness. We lock the doors to accident. Welcome to Mount Zion. The Bible says we are surrounded by, by numerous angels, by innumerable angels. Mount Zion, upon Mount Zion, yeah, nobody will say I am sick. Everybody will say I am stronger. I am healed. I am delivered. I am rich. Welcome to Mount Zion, a place where we are surrounded by angels a cloud of witness you are not alone you are not alone you will not be alone in november you will not be alone in december you will not be alone god will go with you for he said in his word i will not leave you nor forsake you he didn't say i will be with you sometimes but forever i will not leave you nor forsake you even when you go through the waters i will be with you when they put you in the fire oh you ask shadrach meshach and abednego when they put you in the fire there will be a fourth person that will be Jesus Christ uh, when they put you in the lion's den. Listen, uh, the lion will not be able to harm you because I will be there. God is able to do just what he said he will do. Somebody worship. He's gonna fulfill every promise to you. Wave your hands and celebrate Jesus. Don't November, he will fulfill. Because he won't give up on you. He's able. Oh, 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 oh. And he's, he's able. able. Lift up your voice and begin oh, to worship. God is able oh, to do. I don't know what you are waiting on. I don't God know what you are say. trusting God, God for. God is able to do just yes, what he said. said he will. Yes, He's Lord. He's going to fulfill. He's, He's going to fulfill, fulfill every promise. Every promise. This to you. Don't give up on God. Don't give up on God. Because he won't. Because he won't give up on so He's able. He's able. Say he's able. He's able. Oh, 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 he's able. He's able. Oh, yes, Lord. Just worship the King oh, of Glory. There are angels in this place. Able, they are taking your worship. 
They are taking your prayer request to God and they are bringing answers. Jesus is in this place. One, two, or three gather. He said, That is where I am. Yes. Yeah. I say, say he's able, 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 whatever he says, he's able, he's gonna do, he's able, whatever he promised, he's able, he's gonna do, he's able, whatever he said, he's able, he's gonna do, he's able, whatever he promised, he's able. He's gonna do. He's said, able. Whatever he says. He's able. He's gonna do. He's able. Whatever he promised. He's One more time. Say God is he's able. able. Say God is able. able to do. Just what he said. That's what he said. He will do. So he's gonna fulfill. He's gonna fulfill. Every promise. promise That's my favorite part. It says, "Don't give up on God. Don't give up hey, on God. Don't, hey, don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. Say, don't give hey, up hey, on hey, God. Hey. Don't give up on God. Cause He won't hey, hey, give up. Hey, on. Hey, One more time. Hey, don't hey, give hey, up hey, on hey, God. Hey, hey. Cause He won't." Give up on you. He's able. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. He's able. Take a moment in your heart. I want you to know that there is nothing that is too hard for your God. And Sarah laughed. Genesis 17, the Bible says, God told Abraham, I will give you a child. That child will come from your wife's womb, Sarah. I need you to meditate on this word that I'm saying to you. Genesis 17, God said to Abraham, I will give you a child by your wife. The Bible says, Abraham fell on his face and he laughed. He said, will a man who is a hundred years old be able to have a child? Then in Genesis 18, God shows up again. This is the confidence of the God we serve. When he said it in 17, the man of the house, Abraham, laughed because it looked impossible for Abraham. Then, that did not break the confidence of God. You know how sometimes you tell somebody, I'll give you something, and they laugh at you because they know you can't do it. And then your confidence is dumped. And then now when you go, you don't even come back because the person don't even believe you can. When people laugh at you, it breaks your confidence. But this God that I am speaking about, when Abraham laughed, it did not break his confidence. So he showed up in Genesis chapter 18. And he told Abraham again, your wife will have a son for you. This time around, it wasn't Abraham who laughed. It was Sarah herself. Sarah said, ah, at this age, is this this age that I am going to have a child in my womb? And for the second time, you see, when somebody laughs at you for the first time, maybe you are able to resist it. But second time, it's like a punchline. It's a, like a blow. So what happened? is that Sarah also laughed. And instead of God stepping back, this time around, God's confidence was even high. He asked Sarah, are you laughing at me? Are you laughing that it cannot be? Sarah said, oh, no, 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 I'm not laughing. It's God said to her, you are lying. You see, what we think in our heart, God can perceive it. Our posture. Sometimes we think laying on the floor and rolling and rolling and rolling can convince God. No, it is here. You must believe. Somebody say, I will believe. Somebody say, I will believe. There are people who can roll on the floor and cry, oh God, yeah, yeah, yeah. With a lot of words and in their hearts, they don't believe. It's your heart. So when Sarah laughed, God questioned her. God said, why are you laughing? Sarah said, oh, no, 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 I didn't laugh. 
God said, I don't care whether you laugh or not. I will return. And by the time I come, your Isaac will be crying in your arms. True to God's words, when he came, Isaac was alive. I say this to you in this month of November. I don't know what you are believing God for. Think about it deeply. Ask God to help your unbelief. You see, the noble man said, Jesus said, if only you can believe, it will be done to you. The man said, I believe, but even so, help my unbelief. Help me believe this word that you are saying. So somebody ask the Lord to help you believe because the month of November will be a great month for you. Meditate for a moment. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you touch everybody's heart. Right now, right now, in this place, right here. Lord, any unbelief in our heart, any doubt in our heart, Father, we pray that you remove it in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray that the word that is coming will stir up our faith. That it will revive our spirit. It will help us put our confidence, our trust in you. Father, we pray that any distraction, any hindrance for us to receive the word be broken in the name of Jesus. Let these words that are coming be written upon the tablet of our heart. That when we go to the left, when we move to the right, we will hear your voice. The voice that directs men into greatness. Cause us to hear your voice. When we are going to sleep, let your voice be the last voice we hear, Lord. When we wake up, let your voice be the first voice we hear. During the day, let us hear you. So in the end, when we become prosperous, when we become great, we will be able to celebrate you and give you all the glory for all that you have done and continue to do in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Somebody put your hands together and be seated in the presence of God. Be seated in the presence of God. Hallelujah. How many of you are excited to be in his presence? As for me, when I'm in the presence of God, I don't wait for anybody to be excited before I can be excited. The moment I enter into his presence, I just get excited. I'm like a little kid who has arrived before his father. You see how when a father is coming from work, their children see them and they run and daddy, daddy, daddy. That's how I am when it comes to God. My expectations are very huge. But none of it is too big for God. Is anything too hard for your God? I don't know about you. He made the whole world. You try to buy a little tiny house inside the world and you think God cannot do it. Am I speaking to anybody? The world is bigger than the house you're trying to buy. Am I speaking to anybody? The world is bigger than the bank account you're trying to see. Yet, we believe that he created the world, but we don't believe that that tiny house in that little corner, God can make you buy. No. It's too easy. Amen. He will give you power to obtain wealth. Amen. He will give you the desires of your heart. Sometimes we think, I heard a man of God say, a great man of God say, salvation is not a ticket to poverty. Think when we are, we are saved, it means we should be poor. No, 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 no. What did he say to Abraham when he first called him? I will bless you so you'll be a blessing to nation. If you are hungry, how can you bless somebody? You cannot even give somebody what you don't have. That's what he told me this week in my prayer room. He said, how can you give somebody what you don't have? You don't have pizza and you are promising somebody pizza. So you must be blessed before you can be what? A blessing to somebody. Amen. So somebody say, I'm going to be blessed. Don't let them turn your mind into poverty and tell you that you have to be, uh, <laughs> my God, you have to be starving and hungry and and touching ribs before you will see the face of God. <laughs> My God. Today we are finalizing the voice of God. 
Listen, I want you to believe. If you see me dancing in this place like never before, it is because of what the Lord is doing. Amen. Last month, we started a prayer devotion uh, every 5 o'clock a.m. to 6.30. And last month, we, we, the Lord said it will be a month of receiving destiny helpers, burden bearers. And uh, throughout the month, we were praying for destiny helpers, burden bearers, and people who will help us advance, reach our destination. You see, you cannot do life alone. How many of you think that you can, you can walk in this world alone? No. Even Jesus had helpers. Amen. The very day he was baptized, the first thing he did was get helpers. Disciples started following him. So to walk alone and be lonely is against the word of God. Amen. When Elijah was left alone, he said, no, nah, I'm going to commit suicide. I'm tired. <laughs> Lord, kill me. So loneliness is not good. Amen. So we prayed for destiny helpers. And uh, the whole month we were praying. And, you know, the first week it was like, God, the answer. Second week it was like, eh. Third week. Listen, believe God to the last minute. Am I speaking to it? Some of us, we give up too early. Meanwhile, when we are looking for job, and job one say no, two say no, three say no, we keep looking until we find a job. Amen. But when it comes to God, you pray one week and you're like, okay, that's it. Maybe it's not his will. It is his will. <laughs> you must believe. You must persist. You must persevere in prayer. Sometimes the enemy will try to distract you and make you stop praying. Was it not Daniel praying three times a day? Then the people started spying and conspiring against him. Sometimes a conspiracy will come in the form of distraction, make you feel like the prayer is not working. Continue. Luke 18, Jesus said, Men ought to pray and not faint. It was a command. We must pray. It talks about a widow who kept going, 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 going. Every time she goes, the king said, no, leave me alone. She will go again. The king said, no, she will go again. The king said, no. Why didn't the woman go and look for answer somewhere else? It's because the woman was determined that the answer she can get, she can't get it from anywhere else but the king. And finally, the king said, you know what? Let me answer this woman so she will stop disturbing me. I have, I have witnessed that before in, in Walmart when I was, before we walked to Walmart, I said to my daughter, don't ask me anything. I'm tired of you picking stuff. Don't, don't say nothing. I'm not buying nothing for you. We walk into Walmart with my face. Then I'm getting the things. Then this girl sees some nail polish and picks it up. I'm saying, don't tell me to buy that. She said, no, I'm just looking at it, daddy. It's nice, right? I said, yeah, it's nice, but I'm not paying you for it. Then she said, oh, no, no, I'm just admiring it. It's nice. Right? I said, it's nice. By the time we get to the uh, register, I'm, I'm scanning the stuff. Scanning. Daddy, please. Please. Please, daddy, please. Before I knew, I paid for it. <laughs> Before I knew, it was a part of the budget. I paid for it. Then Monday comes, I pick her in school. At this time, we are going home. She said, Daddy, can we get McDonald's? I said, listen, don't. I went in. By the time we got to the stop sign, please, Daddy. Then instead of making a ride to my house, I continue my journey to McDonald's. And I got it for her. It's called persistence. Be determined. From October 1st, if you go online, you will see it. We labeled it month of help. And up to like 20th. Uh, but we kept on. We kept on. 
And getting to the end of October, before I know my phone was buzzing from all around the world. Everybody, this one is saying, we can help you spread this. We can help you do this. We can help you. I was so overwhelmed with the help that was coming from all around that all I could say is, Lord, you are so good. That's all I could say. The whole week I'm walking in the house laughing and laughing and laughing because of the people God has brought, even from overseas in our lives, to help push the agenda of God. The things that I could not do, these people have taken it upon themselves and they are doing it. And they have never seen my face before. This is how God is able to help his people. Imagine if we stopped in 21st October. Oh, God did not answer, so that's it. That would have been it. But we persisted. Believe God till the last minute. Believe him till the last minute. Don't take your eyes off God. The world has a way of making you feel like, you know, take your eyes off God and try it your own way. How many times we tried our own way and we failed? <laughs> it will leave you stressed out, broken, destroyed, dream shattered. But when you put your eyes on the Lord, even in the midst of waiting, he has a way of renewing your strength. He exchanged your weakness for strength. Amen. Am I speaking to anybody's heart? So today we will round up the benefit of hearing the voice of God. We have been speaking about the voice of God and what the voice of God can do in our lives the fact that it brings us uh, to the prepared land, the place that God has prepared for us and everything. So we have seen why every single one of us need to hear the voice of God. Let me share this testimony with you quickly. On Monday, I was sleeping and I had a dream. Monday or Tuesday. And in a dream, I saw that I was doing the devotion, the 5 o'clock program, and the main camera shut off on me. And I was saying, but I charged the battery. Why is the camera off? Blah, blah, blah. And I woke up. So when I woke up, I quickly sat down and I began to pray and inquired from the Lord. Why is the uh, camera shutting down on me in the midst of the broadcast? And the Lord said, it's an attack. They want to, you know, disconnect you from the people who are listening, from the people who are getting blessed. So then I said to my wife, this is a dream I had. And she said, okay, then you need to pay attention also to the batteries. Then I even went ahead and I said, it's spiritual. Then she said, I know it's spiritual. But take, out, uh, uh, take um, how do we call it, pay attention also to the physical. So then Friday comes, 1st of November. I am fired up to lead people in prayer and, you know, to, to, to shape our November, sat down. Whilst I was putting the batteries to the cameras, something said to me, you know what, why don't you just turn on only one camera? That's all you need. Leave the, remain, the remaining two. Set them somewhere. And I heard a little voice say, remember the dream. Then I put the first battery. Then I was going to push the rest on the side. Then the voice said, remember the dream. Turn on all three cameras and have an emergency camera ready. So I did it. I turned it. the other two cameras. I started the program. In the heat of the prayers, boom, the main camera shut off. It's online. If you like, check it on, on yesterday. It was, it was yesterday, right? In the heat of the prayers, the main camera, boom. And it's the main camera that has the strongest battery. It has a special battery attached to it. Boom, it shut off. Then I said to the people, this is the exact dream I had. Now, I had told an apostle in Africa about the dream. So he was online and he quickly wrote in the comment section, yes, you said it. And it's happening. So I turned and I faced the second camera. Then we started firing prayers again. Then that one was... <laughs> My God. And after the program, 
All that I could say is, imagine if I did not hear from God. What would happen? So some of us, you know, when God is speaking to us, because we cannot process the voice of God, we enter into accident. We enter into a distraction. We enter into problems that God clearly was trying to stop us from entering. Sometimes you'll be, you will be wanting to go out and you're looking for your key. And that particular day, you can't find the key. God is telling you, sit home, don't drive. Then you move the car and uh, before you know, boom. Then you go, oh, something was telling me to. So that's something. His better name is God. Amen. <laughs> we always say, oh, something was telling me. That something is Mr. God. Obey him and you will have life. Amen. Amen. So today, since we have known the voice of God, how he speaks, we said, uh, I will go over quickly. It says, the ways that God speaks to us is dreams, visions, trends, through his prophet, and then by reading the word of God. Amen. And the easiest way anybody will get to know the voice of God, the easiest way, so easy, is just reading the Bible. Don't use it for your pillow. No. Pillows don't talk. Amen. <laughs> Pillows, it, it makes you slumber. It makes you doze off. Amen. So you read your Bible. is the easiest way of hearing the voice of God. Somebody say, read your Bible. Ask your neighbor, when was the last time you opened your Bible? There are some people, when they go home today and they pick up their Bible, they have to go like, <laughs> before they can read it, because there are a number of dust. That is on the Bible alone. It's a problem. Amen. <laughs> so, make sure your Bible is clean every day. Amen. Just as you go into the shower and you take a shower and you look good, the Word of God is also to make you cleansed. Amen. Amen. You can be looking physically good, but spiritually a little bit ugly. Amen. You want to look good in the spirit even before the flesh. There are people in the physical, they might not look good, but everybody is running to them. Everybody is helping them. You know why? Because the spirit they carry, you cannot refuse them. The Bible says John, the, John was in the wilderness, John the Baptist. In the wilderness means he can't really take a shower and you know, do all those cute stuff. But everybody was running to look for John the Baptist. Why? Because he carried a spirit that was uncommon in his time. So pay attention to your spirit more than even your physical. When you pray, when you tarry, you wait on God for the voice of God. Something that should take you 10 years to do, it will take you maybe a day, a week, you will not suffer. You will not be thrown into confusion. Amen. So today we are studying the benefit of God. The benefit of God. The first one. Let me read this scripture to you first. I will worship towards your holy mountains or holy temple and praise your name for your love and kindness and your truth. For you have magnified your word above all your name. Psalm 138 verse 2. Those of you who want to take note, it's very important. Watch. The Bible says God has magnified his word above all his name. So all this Elion, Adonai, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Nisi, they are all good. But he has magnified his, what? Word. Above all his fame. When you have the word of God in you, you have everything. Am I speaking to anybody? Because the word of God, we are speaking about the benefit of God's voice, hearing God's voice. And the word of God is the voice of God. I'm, I'm, are we establishing that truth? The word of God is the voice of God. And when he say he has magnified, exalted his word above his name, it means that that book that you have put in the corner, 
that book must be a book that you carry everywhere. Am I speaking to anybody? Now, watch. In Psalm 1, verse 2 to 3, watch what the Bible says. I want us to establish the voice of God before we dive into the benefit quickly. Psalm 1, verse 2 to 3, the Bible says, But those who delight is in the law of the Lord. But whose delight is in the law of the Lord? And who meditate on his law day and night? That person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season. Pay attention. You see, when you are meditating on the word of God, when you read the word of God, it may look like nothing is happening to you. Are, are, are we together? It may look like every day you're spending time and you're reading. And what, what, what am I going to gain from reading the word of God? But it says this person will be like somebody what planted by waters, streams of waters. Now, when you are by the streams of waters, it is guaranteed that you will yield fruit in what? In your season. So there is an appointed time that when you keep hearing the voice of God, there is a fruit bearing season. You cannot miss that season. When you study science, you become a scientist. When you study medicine, you become a medical whatever it is. When you study cars or engines, you become an engineer. Right or wrong? So when you study the word of God, you become alive and you become a life-given person. That is why when somebody is going through, when you open up your mouth and speak, you are able to give the person life. I was sharing a testimony online when a young girl was going to commit suicide and she said she was instructed to call me. She just wanted to speak before she does it. And by the grace of God, she changed her mind and today she's in a nursing school. You must be a life-giving spirit. This salvation that we have is not for you alone. It is to flow through you so somebody else can connect. That's why we call ourselves what the Bible calls us vessels. A vessel, a cup is supposed to what? Give drink to the person who is holding it. Am I speaking to anybody? So when I'm going through and I come to you and you don't have no word in you, you cannot give me life. Are we together? Now watch. It says, and whose leaf does not what? Wither. When you don't have the word of God in you every time, anxiousness, depression, this and that, it's, it's the leaf of you withering. You are, you are breaking out because there is no word. There is no life. There is no water that is coming from the root into your leaves. Am I speaking to anybody? And whatever they do, they prosper. We live in the days everybody is chasing prosperity, chasing prophecy and they don't know how to make it, how to prosper. It's because even when I give you a prophecy, you must have the word. The, the word, the word, the voice of God is what activates the prophecy. It's you work. Paul said to Timothy, work this prophecy out. Work it out. Because, you know, once the word comes, the prophecy comes, the first thing that comes is attacks, not the prophecy itself. The moment I give you a word and say you will be great, the first thing that comes is that Satan will attack you. That is why those who are chasing prophecies all the time, I always say, you are putting yourself in danger. Especially if you don't have the word of God in you. If you every day prophesy, man of God, speak to me. You are putting yourself in danger. You see, you are putting yourself under the spotlight and saying to Satan, here am I, attack me. Am I speaking to anybody? Because the moment the word of God comes to you, what happens is that around you some energy begin to move. Angels begin to go and come. The word came. The angel standing next to you is taking it to God. An angel must come down and release the blessings. So Satan even see the, the traffic. Now when he's seeing it, what he does is to attack it. That's why the moment Gabriel came to Mary and said, you will carry Jesus. Just the next page, 
they were stoning Mary. If Mary don't know God by the word, Mary will be like, yeah, let me cause abortion. I can't carry this. I'm not going to do it. I don't want to be a part of this. So you will abort your destiny when you keep following prophecies and you don't have what it takes, the substance. When the angel came to Elijah and said, you have a long journey ahead of you. What did the angel say? Rise and eat. The word of God is a food that sustains you. It powers you to navigate through the trials and tribulations, through that accident and, 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 and uh, every hindrance the enemy put in your way. Amen. You see how when people go to the gym, they do what? They drink energy drink and all those things. You know why? It is to power them to lift the medals. Amen. So the first, uh, no, let me give you this scripture also. In Matthew 24, verse 35, Jesus said, heaven and earth will pass away. Hmm. This beautiful earth that you buy a lot of expensive ticket to travel and go do sightseeing. If you don't go on vacation, you, you, you feel some way. You get better with Jesus. Oh, this, this year, you never gave me money to go on vacation. <laughs> <laughs> even this world with all its inventions and scientific research and manipulations and things we are adding to the world Jesus said it will what? pass away heaven and earth will pass away but my word will by no means hear the word will by no means will by no means pass away. So one word from God to you can sustain you till you fulfill your destiny. Am I speaking to anybody? One word, one word, one revelation is enough to make you prosperous, great. It's enough to make you stand against the enemy. It's enough to make you prevail. It's enough to make you success. But you must find a word. Amen. Everybody has a word God wants to speak to them. You must find it. Amen. So the first benefit of hearing the voice of God is that it brings a sense of belonging. You can write it down. A sense of belonging. It brings separation. A sense of belonging. In John chapter 10 verse 27 to 28. He said, my, my, it means, the word my there means that you are what? Mine. Am I speaking to anybody? <laughs> my sheep hear my voice. And I do what? I know them. So, the moment I say, my brother, it means you belong to me. My sister, it means I have a relationship with you. My friend, it means I know you and what? You know me. So, it brings a sense of belonging. And it separates you from the rest. <laughs> Am I speaking to anybody? You don't want to be a, a part of the bunch of the crowd. No, 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 no. no. You are separated for signs and wonders. Am I speaking to any soul? You are built to last. You are made to reign. Kings and queens must come to your light. So he said, my sheep know my voice. And I know them. And they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life. And they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hands. Today, we have a lot of rich people. Let me, let me show you. Let me break it down. A lot of rich people. They have so much money. And they can't sleep. They do drugs to sleep. Smoke weed to sleep. Cocaine and everything. You know why? In spite of the fact that they are following is 10 million, they still feel alone. Money is not a companion. <laughs> Am I speaking to anybody? Money is not a comforter. If money is a comforter, 
the likes of Michael Jackson and them, they will not go through stress. That's what Jesus said. I send you the comforter. In times when everybody wants you for your money, the Holy Spirit do not need your money. Are, are, we, are we clear? Are we together? So, when it comes to building a relationship with Jesus, you should know that when he separates you for himself and call you mine, something like loneliness, which brings anxiety, depression, and depression leading to heart attack will not be your portion. Do you know why people commit suicide? Because they feel like nobody is hearing them. Oh, there is a friend who sticks closer than water. There is somebody who does not leave you nor forsake you. You see, when you begin to go through loneliness, these are the scriptures that begin to pop up in your spirit when you have the word of God in you. Oh, he said he will not leave me. He said he will not forsake me. When I go through the fire, he will be with me. When men are only coming to me because of my money, oh, he will still be with me. When people reject me, this God will still be with me. When people put limitation, when they say they don't like me, God will say he likes me. When they say I am finished, God will say I am just starting with you. When you know the word of God, these are the benefits. You have a sense. You, you know that you belong to something. You belong to a kingdom. One thing about the kingdom of darkness is that they will usher you in. But when they are done, they usher you out and destroy everything they gave to you. Go to the prisons today and you will see a lot of wealthy and influential people who Satan gave them money. But in exchange, he took their life and not only them, he's taking their children and everybody who follows after. Am I speaking to anybody? Somebody say, I will belong to Jesus. Somebody say, I belong to Jesus. So it's a sense of belonging. He takes you. He makes you a part of his children. Amen. Another scripture, Exodus 33 verse 16. He said, For how then will it be known that your people and I have found grace in your sight, except you go with us? Except you go. This is Moses talking to God. God is saying, go. Moses is saying, no, 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 no. God, there is something missing. Before we will go, we want you to what? Go with us us because it is only when you go with me that all the world everybody will know that I am different the word unique and different it puts a different price tag on you when they are looking for somebody they will say you know what that guy there is the spirit of God in him he got wisdom. He is so wise. Let's bring him. He will solve this problem. That was what happened to Daniel. That was what happened to Nehemiah. That was what happened to, to all the great people in the Bible. Joseph, how can a slave be called into the White House to show America what is going to happen to the stock market in the next 14 years? That was what happened to Joseph. Amen. So Moses said, Except you go with us, so we shall be separate. You see, Moses didn't want to be just like anybody else in the world. Moses wanted to be different. Somebody say, I want to be different. Have you ever been somewhere and they say, there is something about you. Ah, that's that sentence. There is something about you. You don't qualify the job, but I just feel like hiring you. There is something when they say there is something about you, it means all the people who came for the interview, all the people they have met, you are different. And that's something. Again, I say his name is Mr. God. Amen. <laughs> you people, your people and I, from all the people who are upon the face of the earth. So Moses said, when you separate us, we, we, us, we will be different. We will be different. And that's what was the, 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 the logo, the emblem of Israel. The difference. They had the word of God in them. The word of God was upon them. 
and the hand of God was back in them. They belong to God. That's why God said, they are my people, my prized asset, the apple of my eye. When you find that girl that you are in love with, everywhere the girl goes, like, that's the, the jealousy of God can be your defense. Am I speaking to anybody? When you are jealous of your girlfriend, when you don't want nobody looking at her, everywhere you go, you are like a satellite. <laughs> when you are in the midst of the crowd, every, you look, you're looking, who, who is trying to talk to my girl? Even when the phone rings, you want to see what, your, your eye can pop out out of the socket to, to the <laughs> when, you, when you allow God to saturate you, he becomes jealous of you. And everywhere you go, his eyes is scanning. Everywhere you go, he is scanning. And the devil cannot do you. Amen. Now, number two is leadership and direction. You can write it down. The benefit of hearing the voice of God. And the second one is leadership and direction. Exodus 23, verse 20 to 21. The Bible says, Behold, I send an angel before you to keep you in the way. And to bring you into a place which I have prepared for you. Now, here is this. Beware of him and obey his voice. Are you hearing this? The, vo- the benefit of the voice of God is leadership and direction. So God will make sure you are led. And when you are led, you have a sense of what? direction. That is why when we go to our workplace, we have supervisors, we have managing directors, we have chief executive officers. You know why? They have the vision and they show you what the business is about and you as the employee, you follow the vision and together we all get paid. So when God's voice, you are hearing the voice of God, what happens is that the vision of your life become clear. He gives you instructions where you need to go, how you need to go, when you need to go, and the time of arrival and everything. And when you obey the voice, the truth is most Christians are lost because they cannot hear the voice in order to what? Obey the voice. How can you obey a voice you don't hear? When you are deaf, it looks like you are disobedient. Are, are we clear? Because if I say, give me that chair, you're standing there, huh? Give me that chair. Huh? By the time I say it five times, I'm already yelling. Because I feel like you're playing with me. So sometimes not hearing clearly is even like disobedience. Are we together? So a sense of direction. He said, beware of him and obey his voice. Do not provoke him. For he will not pardon your transgression. My name is in him. Sometimes the angel that God will send to lead you is a person. Can be his prophet, his apostle, his teacher, evangelist, his ministers. Like we said, one of the ways we hear the voice of God is through his ministers and through the word, through dreams. Some of us, when we even dream, we don't understand the dream And what God was trying to communicate to us, we miss it. Amen. But when you read the word of God well, and you let it sink in your spirit, what happens is that you begin to have understanding. When the angel came to Daniel, he said, Oh, Daniel, the moment, the moment you prayed, that is a set of time. The moment you prayed, your voice was heard in heaven. And I was sent to bring you the answer. Watch what the angel brought. He didn't bring money. How many of us are praying for money? Amen. May you receive it in the name of Jesus. <laughs> May you receive it. We are praying for money. We are praying for financial breakthrough. We are praying for all kinds of things. But you know how you will get it? The voice of God will bring you what we call understanding and skill. Are we, are we, are we together? Understanding. The angel said, I come to give you understanding and skill. Understanding brings about mastery. You must master your life in order to be productive. Am I speaking to anybody? 
So, the angel comes. He brings understanding to Daniel. And Daniel stands out. Because now, Daniel has gained mastery of all that his people are going through. You can gain mastery of what is about to happen to America. And the day will come when everybody is running to and fro, people will consult you and say, what shall we do? And you will be there. Even at your workplace, in order to gain promotion, you need to master what you are doing. So when they see that you are fruitful, when they see that you are serviceable, when they see that the spirit of excellence is in you, when they see that the spirit of mastery, understanding and skill is in you, listen, you might not have the certificate, but they will still what? Promote you. I managed a radio station when I was at the age of 23 and I had no qualification for it. And I didn't ask for the promotion. The chief executive just looked at me and said, you know what? I think he would do well handling all of us. And it got to a point, nobody can speak to the chief executive officer without him saying, no, 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 go to him. Even when I'm home, he will call me and say, there are people here, hurry up and come because I can't talk to them. It is called the spirit of God. When it brings you that direction, Everywhere you go, when people are confused, you say, this is the way. And that is exactly what Moses had that Israel did not have. Moses knew the way out of Egypt. The rest of them, they had to just follow. Do you know the way out of your poverty? Do you know the way out of the pain, the affliction? Do you know the way that you can lead your family out of the darkness that is clouding their judgment? It comes from a place of hearing the voice of God. Amen, somebody. So, sense of direction and uh, leadership. The angel leads you. God leads you through his dreams, visions, all these things. And then you make it. Isaiah 30 verse 21. You can write it down. Today we are doing Bible studies so you will know. You see, have you ever seen on social media people say, Oh, somebody will say, that saith the Lord. And the next minute, it's like, God didn't say it. The Bible says, if he said it, he will what? He will do it. So if you don't hear, if you don't pay attention to hear, then it will always be like, either you are lying or God is lying. But when I go to the scriptures and I want to find out between you and God who was lying, my scriptures will tell me God is not a man who should lie. So then I know where you are coming from. <laughs> am I, am I, you see how the word of God can just lead you. You will not be fooled. You will not be bamboozled. You will, you will just keep souring. Amen. Isaiah 30 verse 21, it says, Your ears shall hear a word behind you. This saying, this is the way, walk in it. Whether you turn to the right or you turn to the left, you will hear that voice. Nobody can ever say they made a mistake and God did not speak before the mistake. God is faster than your decision making. <laughs> to anybody. God is faster than the speed of light. The Holy Spirit lives in you. The Bible says before you think he has already thought. You are now thinking. He already processed it. He knew you from the foundations of the world. Before you were formed, I knew your name. I knew your calling. I knew your purpose. I know the number of hair on your head. What makes you think before you made that mistake, I, God, I was sleeping or slumbering. So all the troubles that is befalling us is because what? We don't hear the voice of God. Period. Oftentimes we are blaming God. Oh, God is not answering. God is this and God. Listen. Where there is the voice of God, there is absolute perfection. Where the Holy Spirit dwells is absolute perfection. Where the Spirit of God is, is absolute. Bible says, and, Sam, and, and, and Samuel grew. He became great. His word never fell to the ground. 
everything Samuel said, it came to pass. You know why? Samuel had time to pay attention to the voice of God. At nowhere in the Bible did we hear Jesus making a mistake. Hallelujah. 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 And now he has given us that same spirit. But yet, our life is full of errors, full of mistakes. It's because we are not practicing hearing the voice of God. You know what we do? We make the decision. After we have made up our mind, then we come to God and say, what do you think? <laughs> God, I just bought a car. What do you think? It's nice, right? Can you help me pay the bill? And God said, no, this was not a part of the plan. So now the bill is killing you. God, God, you said I will not borrow. Why am I borrowing? First of all, you borrow to buy the car. <laughs> you defy his instructions. So then everything else that follows will be, you know, it will be the, the, the fruit of what you sowed in the first place. Amen. Number three is defense, calmness, and faith. When you hear the voice clearly, it brings you defense. It makes you calm. When you see people who are so anxious, it's because they don't hear. They, oh man. <laughs> Every day they are anxious. They don't know what tomorrow brings. They don't know what they even did yesterday. <laughs> like, they are, everything is anxiousness. Calm. When you, you see, about a thousand people holding stones coming to Jesus. Hey, we will kill her. We will kill her. We will kill her. Jesus is standing there. Calm. They get there. Hey, what do you say? Moses said we should stone this woman. What do you say? Still, Jesus is just writing. You know why? He is listening to a voice. When you hear that voice, you don't make mistakes. So Jesus actually did not fight them to put down the stone. What did he do? He dismissed them by the word. And two words from your mouth can dismantle a whole situation that has built up for a thousand years. Am I speaking to anybody? So Exodus 23 verse 22, the Bible says, if you listen carefully to what he say and do all that I say, we spoke about it last week, I will be an enemy to your enemies and I will oppose those who will oppose you. It means that when you are listening to God, your enemies automatically becomes the enemies of who? Of God. That is when you can say, stand still. And see the salvation of the Lord work on your behalf. That is why you can quote a scripture like, this battle you need not to fight. God will fight for you. Have you seen some people that no matter what they're going through, they are laughing and they are smiling. You know why? It's because they know God will take care of it. That kind of confidence, calmness, is what allows Paul and Silas to sink in a jail cell where they're supposed to be crying and making the other jailers say, where is your God? You see, most of us, the moment we go through something little, the devil stands there and says, where is your God? Because your attitude even shows that you don't have a God. Oh God, where are you? All this why you didn't know where God is? He's in you. <laughs> where are you? <laughs> you are now trying to find the location of, heaven, of God. He is seated on the throne and his spirit abides in you. And the Bible says, if the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is with you, then that same spirit will quicken your mortal body. What is it that you are going through that Jesus cannot quicken? Hallelujah. So, when you are obeying the voice, you know that your enemies, it's like this is me when I was disobedient. These enemies were on my shoulder, pestering me. But the moment I obey the voice of God, what I'm doing is I'm shedding off responsibility. Have you ever been in a place where they say, who did that? You say, not me. <laughs> 
I didn't do it. Why? It's because you know that you are not responsible for what is happening. So when you obey voice, the voice of God, and even you end up in jail, what happens is that I am not responsible for being in jail. It is you who was supposed to do what? Get me out. So when Daniel heard the voice of God and said, I will not bow, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, they said we will not bow. They all ended up in, uh, in, in fire, in lions then. What happened? God stepped in the situation. Because what Daniel and Shadrach and Meshach, Abednego said, they said, we will not bow down, we will not be careful. Even if God don't do it, we don't care. Now, you leave God by no choice than to what? Come down. No choice. Because now, 10,000, 1 million people are looking. And God loves to perform. He is a God of performance. He said, I will perform. You think that your Hollywood stars and basketball stars, when they see the crowd, they love to perform. You try our God and see. God likes to put on a show. He said, I will demonstrate my power before Pharaoh. What is he talking about? I will perform a show for Egypt to know that I am God. You're not the only one who likes the crowd and likes to perform. Oh, God, performance, God love it. Amen. Again, uh, to know that it brings calmness and, 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 and uh, it increases your faith and a, a sense of, the, the, uh, how do you call it, defense. Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 14 and 15, and then 17. I will move through it quickly. Now, Jehoshaphat was a king. He's going to war. The Bible says the enemies were gathering against Jehoshaphat. A report comes to Jehoshaphat and they say, listen, they are going to wipe us out. What Jehoshaphat did, he went on his knees and began to pray. Oh God, look at these people. We didn't do nothing. You see, if it was you, immediately they said the enemy is coming. You draw a sword. Where is he? That kind of fight you lose. Jehoshaphat went into his prayer room. He prayed. Then he guarded Israel. They prayed. Then the spirit of the Lord came upon one person. Then he said, King Jehoshaphat, thus saith the Lord to you. Do not be afraid nor dismayed. Because of this great multitude. You see, sometimes you would think that your problems are so many. Um, financial crisis, marriage situation, this and that, eviction, lawyer, judges, uh, multitude. Jehoshaphat, they said, do not be afraid of this multitude. Then he goes on and he said, for the battle is not yours, but God. You will not need to fight. Now, who will not be happy to hear that I don't need to fight poverty, sickness, disease, all these things? I don't need to fight again. It brings defense. It brings calmness. It brings confidence in life. It makes you, you see, when you go to sleep, you don't sleep with your one eye open. You say, God got me. God will take care of this. This situation is in the hands of God. You become calm. Anxiousness is gone. Anxiety, gone. Depression, out of the window. Everything that the enemy wanted. Because you know what? The enemy cannot stop your blessings. But if he can manipulate you to make you or cause you to make mistakes, then what happens is that he blocks that blessing. Imagine if Jehoshaphat that same night picked up sword and went. The people were numerous. They, they, will, they, will, they will wipe them off. But because he heard the voice of God and God said, you will not need to fight. The prophet said, listen, position yourself and stand still and see the salvation of the Lord who is with you. It brought, by the time they got to the battlefield, the people have fought each other, killed each other. And what they did is they picked up the gold and the uh, silver and the things of the, of the enemy and they, they, they ran away with it. Number four, it lights up your spirit, your soul, and life when you hear the voice of God. It brings you life. It makes you live long. It lights up your soul. Your soul be on fire. You ever saw people say, I'm so much on fire for God? 
They turn around and something little happens. Oh God. They, 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 they never heard me. <laughs> ah, you will meet a lot of people in your walk with God. Sometimes you will laugh. I knew this person. When they pick up the mic, I'm on fire. I'm on fire for God. I'm on fire. After service, they argue. Where is the fire? It just got quenched. Fire service just came and knock the fire off. Hallelujah. So the spirit, the voice of God. You see, when you hear the voice of God, it light up your soul. It light up your life. It light up your spirit. Jesus said, it is the spirit who gives life and the flesh profits nothing. Now watch, that is John 6, 63. The words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. The words Jesus will speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. Now, in Psalm 119, verse 9 to 11, the Bible says, How can a young man cleanse his ways? By taking heed according to thy word. If you want to walk upright, if you want to cleanse your ways, what you do is that you listen to the voice of God. And he goes on to say, Your word I have hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. See, sometimes you want to make a wrong decision, but you remember what God told you. And you'll be like, ah. There were times when we came to Texas, there were times it looked like New York was better. I look back and something would tell me, see, ah, maybe you should just pick up and go. Life will be better in New York. But then I remember what, what God said. Then I tell the voice, just shut up. Let's be quiet. I even tell the voice, I would rather sleep in a bus stop here in Texas than live in a penthouse in New York. That's confidence. Because what I know what I heard. People called me to question me. Are you okay? Do you think everything is going to be okay? Maybe you should come back to New York. I'm like, listen, listen. It's not what discussable. <laughs> when you hear clearly... It gives you life. Even in a dying situation, you, you'll be on fire. It light up your world. Amen. And it puts you on the uh, right direction. Hallelujah. Number five, it brings assurance and restoration. Assurance and restoration. How will the assurance come? Whatever you're going through, if you inquire from the Lord or before you make a decision, if you inquire from the Lord, before you make plans, if you inquire from the Lord, don't be in a rush. Don't be in a haste. The things of the Spirit is not done like in a haste. Don't rush God. Once upon a time, I said over here, don't pressure God. You can't pressure God to speak. God is a king. You can't pressure your president to speak to you. How much more who? God. So when you bring a situation before God, and he is not speaking, keep on what? Waiting. Because when God is not talking, destiny is at stake. When God is not speaking, everything is like somebody who has put, you know, those who gamble. They do it, they do it, it gets to a point, they put all their money in it. They say do and die. And then they lose their money and then they die. <laughs> Go to the casino. They will tell you how do and die can be very risky. They, they come out of the casino with their shoes, even put on the bed table, and then they walk in bare, 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 barefoot. Hallelujah. So it brings assurance and restorations. In First Samuel chapter 30, verse 8, so David inquired from the Lord, saying, shall I pursue this troop? Shall I overtake them? And the Lord answered and said, pursue. You shall surely overtake them and without a fail, you will recover everything they took from you. David came from a battle and all his wife, children, uh, country people have been stolen. They were ready to stone David. But that did not pressure David to run and go and pursue. That did not pressure David to act irrationally. Rather, as they were ready to stone him, David was in the prayer room 
praying and pulling down, so asking the Lord, Lord, should I go and fight or should I stop? Should I let it go? Should I forgive or should I go and kill this? He kept asking. He kept asking. The people are holding the stones. They are ready to kill the king. But he kept asking. And finally, the voice of God came and God said, pursue and you will recover. When you hear that voice, you are assured that what victory is yours. You are assured that you are going to win. And boom, David went. He recovered all. Not only all. Plus more. Amen. Plus more. Amen. The word of God in Isaiah 55 verse 11, the Bible says, The word that goes out of God's mouth will never fall to the ground. It will fulfill the, word, uh, the purpose for which he spoke it. So when God speaks to you, the assurance is that whatever he has said, what will he do? He will do it. That is assurance. When people say you will fail, you say what? God told me. I will not fail. When people say it will not work out, God told me it will work out. And you keep confessing what God said. You keep confessing what God said. And in the end, you will see it come to pass. Number six is brings healing and creative, uh, creative ability and deliverance. When you read Psalm 107 verse 20, the Bible says he sent forth his word to heal them. You see, when you are sick, when you feel pain, the first thing is not the hospital. I'm not against medical doctors, no. But you know that always your first response shows where your confidence is. Even if you will go to the hospital, pray first. I, 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 we, because you can meet a doctor who is going through divorce and he will prescribe you wrong medicines and you die. I have met people, people, people I know, that doctors gave them wrong medicine. And they perished. So, your first response shows where your confidence is. So, it's you, they tell you, you are saying, the first thing, Lord, this is the report I received. Lord, in your name, your word says, you bring, you send your word to heal me from my sicknesses and my diseases. Lord, heal me. Now, when you step to the hospital, you meet the doctor who is, who is, Powered with wisdom and everything. And he began to give you the right prescription. I've seen, I heard a doctor perform surgery and ended up leaving a tool in the stomach of the patient. You think it's, it's, it just happens? No. Manipulations can make it happen. Amen. So you shape your life. You shape your life. The creative ability, the Bible says God created us in his image. Well, how did he do? He used words. So when you hear the voice of God, if you want to shape your life, after you have prayed and you have received the voice from God, that's how you shape your life. Every day you confess the word. You confess the word. You confess the word. You confess the word. And before you know, that word begins to manifest in your life. The final one is, it becomes your weapon and power. Weapon. Too many times we are arguing, we are challenging each other and stuff like that because I feel like she don't like me or I don't like her or we are against each other. But the Bible says we wrestle not what? Flesh and blood. I, she's not the one I'm fighting. It's something behind her that is manipulating her to come against me. It's something in me or behind me. A, a voice, wrong voice that is telling me Riley don't like me. So I come to church and already before I see him. But if I can go into prayer and use the word of God and begin to speak. The Bible said the word of God is the what? Sword of the spirit. How can a soldier not have a gun? How can a soldier have no weapon? You are not a good soldier. So if you don't have the word in you, if God has not spoken to you and you are acting like God spoke, you are like a soldier with a gun with no bullet. You shoot. Satan look at you and say, I know Paul. He was shooting. AK-47. You, what, what are you carrying in your hands? <laughs> what, what, what are you holding? You are bringing a, a toothpick to a gunfight. Am I speaking to anybody? You are bringing a candle to a bomb fire fight. I'm holding a bomb and you are holding a candle lighter and say, you will burn me. 
That is why a lot of Christians are injured today. Not only injured in the physical, but injured in the spirit. Because they are trying to take on battles that they are not qualified for. Battles that they are not what equipped for. Are you equipped? For that battle you are trying to fight. Are you going to win? Do you have the sword of the spirit? Most of us, we are in a defensive mode. Every day we are blocking the enemy. I'm under attack. I'm under attack. Oh yeah, I'm fighting a spiritual warfare. No, the right Christian is a Christian who has the sword in his hands. And he himself is on the attacking mode. I don't wait for the enemy to slap me before I try to block the next one. That is what we are doing. We take the first love and oh, who? no, before he lift up his hands, uh, there must be a sword in his face. He must not even try you. Hallelujah. Let us rise up. Use it as your weapon. The Bible says, death and life are in the power of the tongue. And those who love it, eat its fruit. You see, the, you know the fruit of, of the tongue? The things you have spoken. Years ago, some things you spoke is what you are. That fruit is what you are enjoying now. So from today, study the word of God. So you can begin to speak the right word. Oh, they said the stock market will crash. No, me, it can crash on me. God called me and he said I will prosper. They say, oh, sicknesses and diseases are coming. You quote Exodus 23. He said, I will purify your food and your drink. I will take diseases and sicknesses away from your food and your drink. Then you keep on going. Recently, I kept telling my wife, these bottle waters we drink, they are fake. And I was saying it as a joke. Only for us one day, we're sitting at the dining table. I don't know what prompted her. She decided to read the side of the bottle and they said it's, it's from a tap water. And they have written it so little that you will not even read, but you will buy it expensive. Don't believe in the worldly system again. Finally, where the word of the king is. Hear me. Maybe you didn't hear anything that I preached. And it's okay. But remember this for the rest of your life. Ecclesiastes chapter 8 verse 4. Where the word of a king is, there is power. What king am I talking about? God. Can President Biden speak and anybody say no? No. He's like the king of America. He make orders. Put this money here. Send the troops here. Go to Iraq. Where the word of the king is, there is power. Power. So, what happens is that when you hear the voice of God, you are holding the word of what? A king. You come only as a money a messenger. The Lord said, give me this. When they said no, you go back to God in peace. And say, God, he said, he will not give me. God will say, go again. Tell them I said, they should give it to you. You come again, they said no. There will be a time Pharaoh will say to Moses, leave, take your people and bless me also. Why? Because Pharaoh realized that Moses was carrying the word of a king. That is more than the son that Pharaoh was worshiping. So if you never heard anything, Ecclesiastes chapter 8 verse 4, where the word of the king is, there is power. Every day when you enter into the room, Lord, give me your word. Give me your word. Lord, I need a word in this season for my life. They said sicknesses are coming. They said financial crises are coming. They said everybody will lose their job. Lord, what are you saying? What are you saying in this season? Lord, give me a word. Give me a word for this moment. And when he releases it, that is your weapon. That is your power. That is your authority. That is everything to you. Hold on to it and it will bring you a result. Hallelujah, somebody. Somebody begin to pray for a moment as we bring the pray, uh, service to an end. Begin to pray quickly. Ask the Lord to speak to you. You have heard many benefits. Many benefits. These seven benefits, when you have them, there is no way you'll be a loser in life. There is no way you will fail. There is no way you will perish. There is no way. No way, no way, no way. So pray as the Lord 
that he will make your hearing better. That he will make your singing better. That he will speak to you. That he will not forget. That his voice will be the voice you hear in the morning. His voice will be the voice you hear in the afternoon. His voice will be the voice you hear before you lay down. Before you make that decision, uh, that life-changing decision, that destiny decision, you must hear from the Lord. Uh, ask the Lord uh, to speak to you. Uh, Lord, uh, I want to know you. I want to hear your voice. Uh, I am your sheep. Speak to me for thy servant hear it. Uh, that is what Samuel said. Uh, and it changed someone's life forever. Pray in the next two minutes as we bring in the service to an end. Yes. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And I'll never go May the voice of the Lord redeem you in times of need. In times of need. In times of need. In times of need. Father, in the name of Jesus, I lift up my hands and I bless your people. Father, I pray that in this moment, you glorify yourself in them. Father, we have heard how your voice brings clarity. How your voice leads us to the place you have ordained for us. How your voice is the most important thing we need to hear. Father, we pray that we too, from this day, we will hear your voice, your instructions, that we may walk in your ways, that we will be like a tree planted by the riverside, so we will bear fruit of every word you speak into our lives. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Somebody shout amen. Somebody put your hands together for the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. Let's make our offerings ready. As we make it ready, can we turn on one of the microphones? We have a brother in our midst. I would like for all of you to know his name. So we will be able to keep him in prayer. We will be able to, to lift him up. In this place, we are family. We stand for each other. And we pray for each other. Amen. How many of you agree with me? And that is why there is transformation in this place. That is why our minds are renewed. That is why we are enjoying the victories Jesus has been bringing. Day and night to our lives. Amen. So let's give him the microphone quickly. Let me ask of his name. God bless you, my brother. You. Uh, please, what's your name? Uh, Kintrell. Kintrell. All right. Uh, who invited you? Uh, Riley. Riley. Come on, let's put our hands together for Kentrell. Let's put our hands together for Riley. Put your hands together for them. Put your hands together for him. Put your hands together for him. Somebody please move to our brother Kentrell and tell him, welcome. Welcome him. Help me welcome him. We are one family under Christ. Please move. Come to my brother and welcome him for me. Let him know that, yes, we are one family under Christ. We are here to love him. We are here to pray for him. We are here to be a blessing to him. We are here to be an ear that he can call on and speak to in times of need. We want you to know that when you need a friend, we are always here. We will always be a blessing. We will always pray for you. If there is one thing we can do, Prayer is something that we will always, day and night, we will send your way. Amen. So be encouraged. Know that you are not alone. That you have armies of God standing next with you. And you will win the battle of life. Amen. Put your hands together for the Lord. Let's send our offerings in. It's on the screens. It's on the screens. Oh, those who are watching around the world. All the destiny helpers that are sharing the video. We truly appreciate and love you. God bless you. We truly appreciate and love you. May the spirit of the Lord be upon you. There is no barrier in grace. Receive your healing, deliverance, restoration. All the miracles God is doing in this place. May you receive a double portion in the name of Jesus. May the Lord bless you and bless you and bless you. May he establish his covenant with you. 
In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Now let us rise up for the close. Easton, can you cut the live feed for me quickly?